Today on the Rumors Comedy Cast, Jordan Wellwood gets Ryan Belleville to share a joke that he never tells about baby poo. This week's episode features music by Uncle Seth. Follow us on Twitter, iTunes, YouTube, and share with your friends on Facebook at Rumors Comedy. We're doing Here we this. are, yeah. Welcome to episode 19 of the Rumors podcast slash video cast. I'm here with Ryan Belleville, who just got into town. Yeah. How'd the show go, man? I wasn't here for It was good. Yeah? It was good. The audiences here are always so nice. Oh, well pander, behaved. Pander time. No, well, uh, <laughs> but they are. Like, yeah. There's certain clubs where the crowd's not very well behaved. Yeah. They kind of like throw red meat at them and then just go, do what you want. Alberta. That's where Alberta, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but here they're, uh, yeah, they watch and they listen. It's great. They're yeah. a good audience, yeah. Cool. You had fun. Did you do, like, when you get into town, do you like to start... Just you have your routine right now, or you like to work in new stuff over the course of the week? Some guys like to do. That. Um, it depends how like far into a tour I am. Like I did a big run uh, in the new year. Yeah. So I, by that point, you're showing up. You have a rough idea. You're pretty clued into what you're gonna do. Gotcha. Uh, whereas then I've had a bunch of other non headlining gigs. Yeah. So I've been doing festivals and things like that. Cool. So I'm going, okay, got to get my head around the. What am I doing now? What's gonna be the hour? Yeah. So the first show went well, but. Tomorrow, like you'll kind of have the rhythm down more. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wicked man. So, where are you coming from? Like, where are you uh, born and raised? Let's get into the nitty gritty, the deets. Oh the, uh, well, everyone likes a good stats. story about uh, where a human being <laughs> fell out of their mother's <laughs> vagina. Story. Uh, that is I, a story if you fell out. Yeah, I fell out. Yeah. I tumbled out and I, <laughs> I pulled the Mission Impossible. I just pulled the cord at the last second and I hung was she there. between two buildings. And she was. was like, <laughs> I was just dangling there like this. <laughs> And she's like, get the jewels. Uh, No, I was born in uh, Niagara on the Lake, Ontario, and then I grew up in Calgary. Awesome. So I usually identify as Calgary. My, like, Wikipedia and things like that say he was born in Calgary. Yeah. Because let them have something. Flames fan or what? What For sure. (laughs) Flames in this guy. That's what we're dealing with. Let's come up. No, no, you got to let Calgary have one treasure, and that's me. Oh, okay. So, no, I, I'm still a Flames fan, but I've lived in Toronto for years, and yeah. now I'm... When did you make the move out there? A lot of guys, obviously, in Winnipeg, were kind of stranded in the uh, middle of nowhere. Uh, uh, some people are have the debate yep. often about uh, when's the time to up and leave, or if you should even leave, or etc. You should leave, yeah, and okay. you should do it as soon as possible. Yeah. In my opinion, yeah, that's that's what I think. Like Everyone's like, should I go? I'm like, go now. Yeah. I, and like... Uh, Toronto's a great city because you can cut your teeth and there's great shows. Yeah. Uh, in some ways, people go, I'm thinking, I want to live in LA or New York. Part of me is like, just go there. Yeah. And skip the middleman. But realistically, I think you're going to develop more as a comic and uh, more quickly in a place like Toronto than you are in, say, LA or New York. Because mm-hmm. there's 10 times the amount of people there. Yeah. Um, that's just what I, what I think. I'm a, a big advocate for yeah. going to the, the biggest market, going to the place. It's scary, too. Like, you go down to L.A., you can be scared at first because there's so many good people on a show. Yeah. But then you just have to rise to the occasion. That's Yeah, it's like playing in the, you know, the better league. The, For sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it has its downfalls, too. You can get into these, like, circles where, you know, you're going out in L.A. and you're trying to make other comics laugh and you're trying to be too hip for the room and then you go on the road and it's all useless. Okay, yeah. Uh, and <laughs> same thing can happen in Toronto or any big city. But, um, uh, yeah, I mean, it's comedy... Competition is a great thing in comedy. Yeah, uh, I, I'm all for a very supportive community, but you got to be competitive. You have to challenge yourself. Complacency is the enemy of of good comedy. Yeah, uh, I know lots of people in small markets who are very funny. Yeah, but uh, they're kind of the only person in town. So it's also hard to get a check on on originality. Yeah, you know, yeah. because we all have un, unoriginal jokes. We all have jokes that aren't pushing boundaries. And then when you hear somebody else hit almost the exact same topic or premise. Sucks. Well, it sucks. Yeah. But, but then you go, uh, for me, I, I, I kind of like it because it go, makes me go, okay, well, that target was too easy. Yeah. You just can't do it. Now, you know, you're like, okay, this is out there. Other people are thinking the same thought. I mean, yeah. it, it baffles the mind that 15 years ago, people were arguing over who, like, hey, I had a crocodile hunter bit first. I'm like, <laughs> there's, you're... It probably had the same. So that's not, not good to do anymore. No, I'm okay? just saying the, the crocodile Steve, bit. The Steve Irwin, yeah. the Steve Irwin uh, <laughs> comedy window is closed. It's done, guys. Uh, now that I'm done my Jean Chrétien joke, uh, you guys remember Steve Irwin? That would be a funny character, a guy who's just like 
10 years behind the time, and he's just finally letting go of his A stand-up comic it. who just came out of a coma. <laughs> yeah. Oh, for big like beard. Big fake ago. beard. What's up? What else? What yeah, else? Guy, that might be, like, I found, personally for myself, for some reason, this year, finding Bush hilarious again. Oh, yeah. Because, like, it was when I was in high school. I'm like, maybe it's because it's been, like, 10 years, and it's, oh, like, yeah. it's had time to, like, it's like, that guy was hilarious. He was the best. He was but he was best. overdone at the time. Well, oh, for sure. Yeah, I mean, it, it was one of those things you could not talk about. I, I've done so little politics mm -hmm. since, uh, like, halfway through the Bush administration. Yeah. Because when Bush was in office, I was living in America for most of his, his presidency. Okay. And uh, you just got so depressed. It stopped being <laughs> funny at one point. You're like, hey, hey. What if Wiley e. Coyote ran the country? You're like, that'd be hilarious. <laughs> yeah. For like 15 minutes of a sitcom, not like eight years of a, a country. But yeah. uh, that got, and then, yeah, all the jokes you had, uh, everyone else had it by the oh, year three. For sure, yeah. Uh, what uh, what was your experience as a Canadian when you first got down to the States? That's always, I find that fascinating. Um, I liked it. I mean, I I'm a dual citizen, mm -hmm. so I, I mean, I love America. I've been there a lot. Um, I, I, Again, like I said, you're pushing yourself yeah. more. You, it's a challenge, mm -hmm. and when you do rise to that, it's 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 a good feeling. Yeah, I think uh, comics all the time get into a very comfortable spot, and they don't want to move. They play the exact same club all the time. Yeah, they. Uh, I think it's, I, the first time I played, really play had a like a big American gig. I was working in Vegas, mm -hmm. and I was super scared, like anxious. I'm like, will they get? I have way too much Canadiana stuff. Which uh, which room was it? Uh, that first time was the Riviera. Okay. Which is a fine club. I mean, mm -hmm. um, I went I went to the Tropicana, which was a much nicer club after that. That cool. became kind of my home. But uh, yeah. uh, the Riviera, I went there. And it's middle America. It should be, like, e an easy room, but yeah. it was tough. And there was some convention going on. The, most of the crowd for that week was African American from the south uh, <laughs> east. Okay. So it was a very, like, it was a very regional thing. It was very, and I just, I just was sitting there going, this is a demographic in the audience that is most of the audience yeah. for whatever reason for this conference. And I was just terrified. And once I found the rhythm, it, it was fine. Gotcha, yeah. yeah. I feel like that town could be like, like you said, like if there's something in town, like, oh, it's a rodeo convention in town, yeah. or it's like immediate, you know, you don't getting know. nerds one day, and then you're getting like cowboys, yeah. and it's like. Well, I played, uh, I remember doing uh, the Laugh Resort was kind of my home club in Toronto before that closed uh, a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And there was a, um, a biker convention. Oh, there. crazy. So there was all these Hells Angels <laughs> in the audience one night. But at the same time, there was like a teacher's convention. So there was maybe like 15 <laughs> bikers and like 30 teachers. They're all hooking up. Like. They're, yeah, they're all making out and rubbing their wieners together. But uh, it was a weird thing. But the, the crowd was fine. They were all... I mean, generally people want to go laugh. Yeah, they're on the same. Club, hopefully, yeah, that's the that's the goal. Mm -hmm. um, as a Canadian comic, you do have, I would say, more TV and movie credits than a lot of Canadian comics. Yeah. And uh, was that like, did you you obviously started in stand up and then you uh, went um, right into? Yeah, I started in stand. My parents were both actors, so I've always been kind of like, oh, I, cool. I did plays when I was a kid. I always loved theater. Yeah. Uh, but comedy was kind of my my calling. Yeah. But I very much like I, if people are like, what do you consider yourself? I'm like, I'm a comic. First and foremost. Yeah. And then uh, I love acting. I, I enjoy dramatic acting. I, I love comedy writing. Mm -hmm. I just like enter anything that falls in the bracket of entertaining. Yeah. But my strength and the thing I love the most is just comedy. Yeah, that's all kind of secondary to the stand-up. Exactly. And yeah. I've been very blessed. I've had a lot of great gigs, a lot of great TV stuff. But again, this is Canada, too, where yeah. you can do all this stuff. And it, it I mean, you do get more people out of the shows, but it's not like... In America. Oh, yeah, where it's like, oh, Big Bang Theory or whatever, yeah. Exactly. you got to kind of catch it, you know, Canadian content. you got to catch it when it's ripe. And it's, it's, it's right there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. You might get like a 20% bump at yeah. the club, but that's, Still you know. Still 20%, percent so nothing to sneeze at. Nothing to sneeze at. I noticed uh, two uh, two projects you've worked on, Go in the Distance yeah. and Almost Heroes, both are titles used in American movies. Yeah. There's no, were you bitter? Or you're like, when this they, is horse shit. Well, Almost Heroes was uh, an American movie first, mm -hmm. but Going the Distance came after. Okay, I think I don't. I was well, wondering how that worked with titles. You can name it whatever you want. Could I just like have a movie called Lord the of Terminator? the Rings? Yeah, exactly. called Lord of the Rings about a hula hoop team. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's going to Sochi. <laughs> yeah. It's in the past. Uh, it's a period piece. Yeah, period piece about the Sochi Olympics. <laughs> was that really a good period? No, it'll be awesome. Mm, it was. Yeah, not that uh, long ago. Um, I don't. Yeah, Almost Heroes. We only named it that. We wanted to call it Masters of the Plazaverse because it was a nerdy show. Okay. And it was supposed to be uh, 
it was supposed to be very meta, but the network wanted it to look a bit more mainstream. Okay. And they didn't quite, which I think worked against us. Because if, yeah. if you look at it like a mainstream show, people won't necessarily get it. Mm-hmm. But if you get that it was making fun of you, sitcom tropes, uh, okay, yeah, it'd be a, a, a more enjoyable premise. But they didn't like Masters. And rightly so. Masters of the Plasiverse is probably an unmarketable, <laughs> It's a little stupid, uh, hard doesn't to roll off the tongue. Yeah, exactly. So they must know something. Do you have anything uh, TV, movie-wise, you're, you're working on or like looking forward to well, in the I'm, future kind uh, of thing? Yeah, or? well, I'm always writing and working on other stuff, and mm-hmm. you know, I have stuff in development, but that that takes a million years when you're okay. when you're writing. It's funny because uh, like a show like Almost Heroes, that uh, we did that five years ago, I think. Yeah. And it has way more viewers now okay. than it ever had in Canada because it's on Hulu in the states. Gotcha. So I keep getting these emails. Uh, and there's more work opportunities coming now, mm-hmm. five years after it's canceled. This is one of those mm-hmm. moments where, like, God bless the new media, yeah. the way things work. Netflix and the whole revolution of, of streaming. Yeah, and, it's yeah. great. It's a great. It's a great thing. But right now, I'm more focused on stand up and just and just doing that. Just hitting the road. Well, yeah, a little bit. You go through phases. I mean, as a comic, where uh, you get complacent, you feel bad because you're not putting enough time in it, mm-hmm. and. Uh, a lot of guys do this. They get a little success in certain TV areas, and then they don't go on the road anymore, and then they get scared because their act's not as sharp. Yeah. Uh, and they don't want to go do the clubs. They don't want to fail. Um, I get white-hot panic if I feel I haven't been out enough, mm-hmm. and then I, all I really want to do is do stand-up for a bit. And then I do that for you know a few months. I'm out on the road, yeah. and then all of a sudden, I get a white-hot panic because I need to make real money. <laughs> so I'm like, I need to get more film TV stuff going because... Yeah. Uh, Live shows are paid horribly. I feel like every time, like I've ever, I always try and get up to Toronto once a year mm-hmm. just to kind of, and then get on as many shows. But yeah. every time I've been on one or like anything, and like Ryan Belleville was there, so it's like your your grinder. Uh, I'll go out. I yeah. go out a fair bit. I yeah. try to. Uh, yeah, it's the same thing. There's, I can always tell when I'm being. It, I have a kid. Mm-hmm. My wife works full time, and uh, I mean, real. My life is nice when I'm not performing. Yeah. You have to drag yourself She's out nice to do shows. To you. It's My wife's like... nice to me. She's, she barely hits me with knotted rope anymore. There you go. Barely. She took some of the knots out. She took like three of the knots out. <laughs> so it only leaves like two bruises. She but, switched to twine. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, you just, I mean, I'm, I'm at that point. I've been doing it. Uh, I've been performing for 20 years. Yeah. And uh, I feel like a much older guy than I am. Okay. Because I feel like I've been grinding out for a long time. <laughs> And this is the this is what I'm at. Yeah. But uh, the, the, yeah, I've just now I'm at a point where I've just seen so many people who are talented and great fall off and disappear and disappear. Yeah. And then you're constantly being bombarded by young people who are hilarious. Trying and, to bite and nip it at the heels. Sure. Yeah. And you have to, you just have to evolve or die. Keep going out. Keep going out. Yeah. So I definitely try to get out as much as I can. Cool. Do you remember like when you were maybe? the early part of your career and mm-hmm. you're like looking forward to it. Do you remember like a guy that you would see where you're like, I don't want to be him in 20 years. Like, Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, parades. Describe that guy. guy. <laughs> Describe that guy. Describe. You ever know? I'll, I will tell you one of my biggest pet peeves and it's a less common. No, it's not even, it's really common in the States too, but okay. uh, for me, it's completely disingenuous comedy where like we all manufacture bits and 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 alter stories. Exaggerate. Exaggerate. Yeah. Uh, I was doing a bit tonight about uh, people not paying attention when they cross the street, mm-hmm. and I said I I saw nine thousand people do that just today. In a, <laughs> there's a woman in the audience who yelled out liar. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, you caught me. How do you not yeah. get how hyperbole works and comedic <laughs> exaggeration? 8,000 tops. Yeah, there's no way he saw that many people. Uh, what was the question? Oh, we were just talking about crusty old comics. Oh, right. So this is my, uh, my pet peeve. When people start talking about things, they're like, that never happened to you. <laughs> the, the, the classic is, and this is no diss, but like the border crossing stuff. It's like, so then I said to the border guy, I'm like, no, you didn't. You said, yes, sir. <laughs> Sorry, you're yes, very sir. meek. Yeah. I'm just going over the board. I'm going to shop for a bit. Thank you, sir. You didn't go, uh, well, burn. Well, yeah, that's right. There's all those drugs in my ass. You did not say that. We all know you didn't say that. So this comedy premise is based on the fact that it's like, okay, a made-up story. It's dangerous to put that out there, too, because some young comic could be like, oh, it'll be funny, and then, like, try and burn yeah. it. Yeah, and he ends up in a weird room with a bag on his head. Well, and I mean, I don't want <laughs> – I'm not one of those guys who's like, oh, that's so hacky and bad. I, I have certain things I don't I don't like talking about air 
plane, anything airline travel. Yeah, that was beaten to death in the 80s, 90s. 80s, like, 90s. Yeah. And, uh, but then again, you know, people, you watch Louis C.K. and he'll come out with a great airplane bit. Yeah. And stuff. Uh, or Pat Nozzle. There's, there's things to do on it. It's yeah. just I try to avoid that. It's tough because it's like you know you're always gonna if you're traveling you're gonna have a travel jokes. Sure. There's, you know it's you're like, gonna do it. How do you avoid that? Like you know, like you know you have a young family now. Like how do you avoid slipping into the old uh, <sighs> all know? the family stuff? Yeah, I which is like great because I feel like it's it's everyone can relate to it, but it's always gonna be unique. Well, I feel you just there has to be some level of honesty to it. Yeah. Um. There's certain stuff that's so generic. I mean, there's a point. I remember when I had uh, my kid and I started doing a little bit of kid stuff. Someone mm-hmm. said, hey, Belleville, you're not going to be one of those guys who just talks about kids all the time. <laughs> all this stuff. And I go, you just did a, a, a shitload of material about uh, hotel rooms and travel. I'm like, yeah. don't Jerking lecture. Jerking towels. And, yeah. yeah. Ju- <laughs> like, I've heard my, my relationship with my child is going to be somewhat original. And it's a huge life event. It's a life event. People always get mad about that. So I just think it's weird. talk about, like, I talk about my son getting a boner and stuff like that in my act. And uh, yeah. it's like, I try to talk about things that have actually happened and act- philosophically affected me as a human being. Yeah. And then if that's has truth to it, then I don't feel bad. I don't feel icky about it. Okay. I mean, I had a whole thing about childbirth at one point. Which I never even really liked talking about because I just mm-hmm. felt it was too, too generic. Uh, but the only thing I talked about was just the mind alter. But it's it's you start doing it, goes, it just feels too easy. Yeah, as a comic though, like I can't imagine. Like obviously I'm not nowhere near that. But like just yeah, you're having a kid and there's this whole birth thing. Like that's yeah. a freaky traumatic situation. It's like a, you're, it's you're gonna material's gonna happen. Yeah. Yeah, I think. <laughs> well, the thing I I I do find amazing about uh, having a kid is you realize there's this whole spectrum of things that you never knew about. Yeah. People don't even talk about uh, things that parents don't talk to people non-parents about mm. and then stuff that parents don't even talk to other parents about. So there's this weird kind of almost secret thing, but that's a universal truth about life. And you get to blow it open. Well, yeah, like this is an example of a bit that I just don't really do just because it, it's just too harsh, I think, <laughs> a reality for people. But um, I, at one point... You're getting I to, it here right now. Well, I used to talk about how... Uh, like the fact that babies are born with poo and like they come out with a poo. Yeah, it's called merconium, and uh, people with kids don't even think about that. It's not even a thing you think about, but they have a, yeah. they have a fully loaded shit inside of them wow. for like months, uh, and they come out. And if you really think about it, giving birth is pretty much just taking a shit with your pussy that's wrapped in a baby, <laughs> right? Yeah, it's like an inception kind of. Yeah, thing. but, but uh, uh, you say that, and people are hor- People with kids are kind of horrified, and people without children are just. Horrified. And there's one that. guy in the corner. You just blew his mind. It's gross, <laughs> yeah. and I get it. It's totally gross. And I was grossed out with myself when I thought of that thing. But you go, ugh. But that's what I don't know. Like it's a good thought. I but like comedy. It. If you're just doing all kids stuff, if, if you're just doing all kids stuff, that's a nightmare. Yeah. If you're just doing all. It's the same thing. Like I used to talk about drugs and partying and all that sh- shit and nonsense. When you were cool. When I was cool. Yeah. Back in the day before <laughs> Dora the Explorer. Uh, yeah, people don't. But whatever. <laughs> but how boring is that? You watch a guy talk about drugs and partying yeah. and trying to get laid for an hour. That gets boring, too. And yeah. you're alienating. I mean, realistically, 70% of the people who come to a comedy club yeah. are married people, mm-hmm. people with kids. Who women. Are women. <laughs> yeah. 70% of them are one woman. <laughs> one the, one woman. Giant, giant woman. She makes up 70%. We are in the prairies. Yeah, it's like one extra lady. they keep re-editing into <laughs> chairs. Uh, we have uh, we have a tweet segment that we're gonna try. We're gonna we've been working to make it happen. Nope. Uh, we got one response. Just uh, we threw it out there to people on Twitter. Yeah. Uh, one response from someone who you may know. Uh-oh. Uh oh. Mr. Michael Hutchison at nope. Michael Hutchison. Yeah. Uh, how did Ryan's parents' success contribute to his decision to enter the entertainment field? That was weird because I read it uh, in the wrong in the wrong voice. order. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, my parents were. Actors, so I grew up around theater. I mean, what are they? Were they theater actors? They're yeah, legit, yeah. The, like hardcore theater actors. Um, and they met doing a play back in the seventies. Yeah, and they're very talented. My mom still works at the Shaw Festival out in Ontario. Cool. My dad's mostly retired, but he's still he's doing on Golden Bond right now. Uh, <laughs> like they're real yeah. actors. Uh, so they gave me a huge appreciation, and I think I do. I like to think that my writing has become a lot stronger. I was always a much stronger performer mm-hmm. than I was writer, and now I feel like my writing has come up. It's but up. I s- still do a performance-heavy show, and I love yeah. acting stuff out. Um, I think that helped a ton. I think a lot of people are clever but don't have 
stage presence. Mm-hmm. Um, and beyond that, I lo- as much as I love acting and I love, love, love theater, uh, I watch my parents have to take regular jobs and do stuff and uh, be beholden to someone calling them and saying, this is the job, you can do it at this time frame, and that's, that's it, that's all, all yeah. it is. So when I found, because I started as a street performer originally, and then I became a, a comic. Oh, what was the performer? What was your street? Performer? Uh, me and a buddy, like well, it was me and like two guys, and we would alternate, do two man shows. We do, would do like comedy shows, Quite and good. we would light fireworks off in our mouth and yeah. jump each other on little bikes. But we had no real skill. We learned a lot of little things. Like, I could juggle, I could eat fire, <laughs> but we could never do it well enough that that would make the money. It had to yeah. be the comedy and kind of how bad we are, but how hard we try. And we actually got pretty. Solid. That's awesome. But I liked the idea of being able to go out at any moment and perform. And uh, even when, and even now, it's like I'll, I'll be on a TV show that's canceled and you'll go like a year without getting any other substantial work. Yeah. And you can sit there and be like, oh, I'm not going to work again. Or you can just go on the road and do your act. And, and even if somebody's not willing to pay you, even if you're cold in the clubs, which mm-hmm. happens too, yeah, you can go like, I'm going to go down the street, I'm going to do a show. And then this is proof that I'm a performer. This is proof that I, I do what I do well. I walked into a room where there's eight people or 800 people. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, people laughed, and for a moment I, I was doing my craft, my art. So yeah. that is the, probably one of the biggest influences to having parents who work in the industry. Wow. It was almost a foregone conclusion. <laughs> like, Not at all. Are you going to like, uh, because you had you had parents in the industry, are you like, with your kid, are you going to be like, almost like a sports dad, but with like no. acting? No, I want to be like a sports dad. I want to be like, you want to be like a tip, like a, <laughs> <laughs> I want to be a happy person who has a regular job <laughs> yeah. and like, thinks about suicide less than comedians. <laughs> Just like, less, just like three percent. No, I mean, nice. I'm not, yeah. I'm not tricking myself into thinking that <laughs> dentists are happy people. But no. no, I want, I just want whatever he wants to do. I just, uh, I'm not going to push him to that. Although I did uh, a guest uh, star on this kid show this year for like PBS. In the okay, it, it was a lot of fun. Uh, you know, got to hang out for like three days with these kids, and yeah. I looked around. And it's on PBS. This isn't Disney Channel. So these kids aren't. Gonna be it's Sesame Street's uh, home yeah, turf. That's they're not gonna, big. but they're not gonna be Hannah Montana. Like, <laughs> okay, yeah. like these kids are making. Are you saying they're shitty actors? They, 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 <laughs> these kids are gonna make like college money. Okay, and get to hang out on a set for a kids show that has slides and stuff. Um, yeah, and then they have tutors, which so they're probably getting better schooling than they would have. Oh wow! So I thought maybe. I would consider letting my son do something like that, where yeah. his university is paid for because <laughs> it's rickety on show business. <laughs> Then maybe, but I would never want him to be. I've yeah. worked with a, a lot of child actors, and there's no offense. Mm-hmm. I love all the, the guys I work with, but it's a tough, I mean. It's a weird, yeah. It's like you can really mess them up. It's so much. It's like there's a fine line between, yeah. like, Frankie Muniz and, uh, <laughs> you know, and and Justin Bieber. Yeah, everyone else. I name anyone. <laughs> I like how he chose Frankie Muniz <laughs> as the grounded one. It's a very fine line between the grounded Frankie <laughs> well, Muniz. Well, he just bowed out at some point, I guess. Yeah, he wants to become out. a race car driver. Oh, there you go. That's yeah. unreal. Uh, that's, no, but that's not normal. <laughs> <laughs> that's not normal. I'm going to quit show business to become a race car driver. <laughs> yeah. That's like a maniac. Uh, <laughs> I think it's pretty badass and cool. It's pretty cool. Jason Priestley did it. Oh, okay. You just made it not cool anymore. No, he's the coolest. He's the coolest man show business. Do you have? Uh, like, uh, I'd like to plug uh, your your podcast, Flying Bellevilles. It's you and your brother. Yeah, me, me and Jay. And uh, is there like a? You want to just maybe describe it for some of the viewers in Winnipeg who might know? Uh, well, I mean, we talk to people inside like show business. A lot mm-hmm. of writers, some showrunners, uh, people who write on The Simpsons, some of the kids in the hall. Yeah. Uh, People who are working at a high level in, in film and television usually, and okay. comedy centric. Cool. And then we just kind of goof around. We usually do sketches and stuff like that. Nice. Uh, yeah, but that that's the focus. Like for people who are really into f- film and TV writing and awesome. comedy writing, and that's kind of kind of the focus of that. Cool, man. And do you have uh, anything you want to accomplish while you're in Winnipeg? <laughs> <laughs> any, just, any anything you're looking forward to? No, you know what though. This is the this is the thing. Like sometimes I yeah I just want to. Have some drinks and chill out, and and have a. This is the place to do it. I, yeah, I just wanna, I'm, I'm gonna go take my pants off later, and I, what did I say? I'm gonna go watch some Homeland. Okay. Drink some scotch. There you go. Like this is a. That's a nice Tuesday uh, evening. Well, when you're in your 20s and you're in comedy, that's all you do 100 percent of the time. Yeah. But now I have like a life. Well, these people who work here might uh, make it happen against your will. Yeah, take my pants off and force me <laughs> yeah, to watch force Homeland. Down your throat. You watch Homeland. Did you drink this? <laughs> You think of a, yes, is this show mildly racist to all Arabs? Of course it is. 
<laughs> regardless of the fact that the main bad guy is a ginger. It doesn't matter. Anyways. Don't uh, you still talk about the issues while they do weird stuff to you? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The, and the issues are <laughs> usually kind of like... It's an open dialogue while they... Muslims are bad. Torture. But it, I still like... I, I'm sorry, I like spy. Can I just plug MI5, everybody, in Netflix? If you want to watch a good spy show. The British, when they fight spies. Oh, brought to you by Netflix. It, right? Th this airs on Netflix, right? <laughs> we assume. Am I misplugging this? <laughs> I don't know. Where does this air on? At Ryan Belleville on Twitter. You can follow me at Jordan Wellwood with one L. Mm -hmm. And on Twitter. Tune in next time. Thanks for joining us. Ryan Belleville, everybody. Check him out. He's here all week. We did it. Yeah. We did it. Is that all right? Easy. Yeah, it's great. Okay, good. Yeah. So I, hope I, didn't ram I hope I didn't ramble too much. No, man. Did I ramble too much? Okay. We, we talked. Oh, it's great. It's great. Yeah, so nice. yeah, no, it's fun to... I love it's fun it. to talk about comedy. It is. And like and hard know, to make it entertaining. It doesn't always happen, but that was entertaining and interesting. Yeah. Does it say?